when Ontario starts ramping up those test kits. But let me move from the health to the financial side. Over 4.7 million Canadians. Just pause as you reflect on that number. 4.7 million Canadians have already applied for the Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit, the so-called CERB. That's $2,000 a month for up to four month, months. But there are new changes to the critical financial aid packages to the business side. That's a different program. And there's two streams. That's the 75% wage subsidy. Companies can now qualify if they've lost 15% of their wages compared to this time last year, not 30%. And students hired by the Canadian Summer Jobs Program will get 100% of their wage subsidy support. But will the expansion of this program be enough? Let's get some answers from the Treasury Board President, uh, Jean-Yves Duclos, who joins us from Ottawa now. And I hope you and your family are handling this well, sir, and I appreciate you joining us. Um, first of all, this expansion of the wage subsidy program, the cost has already been estimated of this at $73 billion. So now that you've expanded the criteria, do you expect that cost of this program to go up? And if so, by how much? Well, hello, Evan, and hello to everyone listening. And the answer is yes, we would expect that to go up. But more importantly, we expect the benefit of that program to be significantly enhanced because we've heard over the last few weeks that there were serious concerns for startups, for newly formed companies, for registered charities, now, for the ability to qualify for the program. So, what Minister Morrow announced today is a great uh, increase in the flexibility and therefore in the impact of that wage subsidies for businesses and workers across Canada. Uh, Minister, can you give us a sense? The, the, the one program, the CERB, for uh, families and people who have lost their job is going to go for four months, $8,000. Is the same program for businesses, the wage subsidy, is that done in four months or can your government uh, and will your government be ready to ex uh, extend the life of both of those programs? So to serve the Canada Emergency Response Benefit, that's for uh, people that have lost all of their income and therefore all of their ability to make ends meet. That's for a maximum of four months. And the application, as you know, started on last Monday. For the wage subsidies, it's for three months, but that's also retroactive to March the 15th. Now, we'll follow what will take place, of course, in the next few weeks and months, and we'll obviously have more to say and to do with the information that we'll get both on the health and the economic uh, impacts of the virus. Uh, Minister Ducol, major fines Bill Morneau announced for businesses who abused the subsidy, 225% of the fine of what they received or up to five years in prison. But how will you define, quote, an abuse of the system? What does that mean? Now, what we absolutely need to do now in the emergency context is to depend on the goodwill and the good faith of people, Canadians and businesses. That's because we are in an emergency situation and because we are able to rely on the good faith of most Canadians, we're able to help a large number of Canadians, workers and businesses. This being said, there will be a time coming, not long from now, when the Canada Revenue Agency will start looking into the files of Canadian businesses and workers that have applied for different types of benefits. The Canada Revenue Agency is a very solid agency, so we're telling everyone, especially those few Canadians that might think about frauding the system, that they should be very careful because there might be very serious consequences to betraying the right. good, faith, good faith that many others will display in the next few weeks. I mean, I, I get that, and we want to stamp out abuse, but there's going to be confusion. Let me give you an example, and let's turn to the other package, the Canadian Emergency Relief Benefit. As I said, more than uh, 4 million Canadians have applied, and some of them have had their money, which, by the way, is a testament to the incredible work of the public service processing all that. But some Canadians are already telling CTV that they've received multiple payments or EI payments, not $2,000, but $4,000. They're basically getting paid twice. How does that happen, and how will you stop that? Now, there might have been all sorts of instances, and that's, that's therefore why I cannot answer to each one of the 4 million different cases. However, what is certainly true for everyone is that there is only one $2,000 available per month. So whether you receive it from EI, the Employment Insurance System, or from the new Canada Emergency Response Benefit, it's only $2,000 per month per month. So if you have received it retroactively for the last four weeks and you have received an advance payment for the next four weeks, 
that's fine. It is still $2,000 per month. Now, if you think it was a mistake right. made, then you should keep that extra dollar, extra amount safe and be able to return it if there was indeed a mistake being made. Okay. So return it. All right, real quick. The $40,000 small business loan opens up tomorrow. That is done via the banks. Of course, it's backed by the government. There's a lot of questions, sir, about eligibility. How is your government defining a, quote, small business, and who's eligible for that $40,000 loan? So for that particular program, which is extremely important, is for those businesses that have a, a total wage bill of between $55,000 and a million dollars. <laughs> Now, as you said, the banking sector is ready to help those uh, small businesses, and they should be able to apply very quickly. Um, let me ask you something that's just come across our desk right now. Uh, we're just finding out that the U.S. Customs and Border Protection will now seize exports of mask gloves and other critical equipment uh, until it determines whether the U.S. needs it or not. I understand that we had this battle with the U.S. over the, the uh, N95 3M masks. But does this now apply to Canada? Like, was that a victory of a one-off, sir? Or does your government expect that the U.S. could still stop supplies from coming to Canada based on the information we're reading today? Well, the Deputy Prime Minister, Minister Freeland, and then the Prime Minister himself have been very clear with the U.S. government. We are in a reciprocal beneficiary relationship. We understand, and we should all understand, that to be able to work together and to produce on each side of the border medical equipment that can benefit for the other side of the border. But we need to, to allow for the flow of goods and, and services. So that has been made clear to our uh, friend and neighbor uh, recently. I think we had some clear demonstration just a few days ago that this was understood. Now, there will always be challenges in our relationship with the But it's not a guarantee, <laughs> j j just to be clear. They haven't guaranteed that they won't stop further supplies, or have they? Well, it will always be an evolving relationship. I think we are quite good as Canadians in handling that important relationship, but we should be mindful that it's a continuing relationship, right. and therefore we always need to be uh, strongly advocating the importance of working together. Uh, just before I let you go, the NDP wants your government not only to send $2,000 to every Canadian as part of the uh, Canadian Emergency Benefit, but they want to basically make a guaranteed basic income uh, permanent. That's something that in your past, that was your field of expertise. Could this become a permanent program, sir? Well, we'll have all sorts of, of lessons to take into account as we proceed through this crisis. It's certainly the case that uh, the unemployment insurance system wasn't designed for such a huge emergency crisis. Uh, we have done, with the help of the public servants that you were right to command, we have done great things over the last few days and weeks. But as we exit from this crisis, I certainly believe we'll have great discussion and important work to do on the Canadian social, the social safety net. Uh, Minister Ducot, I've got to leave it there. Good, take care of yourself and your loved ones. I very much appreciate you joining us today on another critical day. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Coming up on